Maybe seated. Those words in Hebrew says, Blessed be those that come. Blessed all those that are here in this sacred moment. Let us take a deep breath and look at the beautiful sky. You know, I'm only in middle management. I put my prayers in. God doesn't always listen to me. But uh, on the merit of Rachel and Andrew, God listened. And uh, it is mostly sunny. And uh, the glass is mostly full. And life is beautiful. So let us uh, cherish this moment. Let us look at each other and realize that these moments will be with us for our whole lives and that we could always draw on these sacred feelings that we have now for the entirety of our lives and that these sacred moments are moments that are treasures that are in the heart and you have the key to open that treasure box whenever you want and, uh, and there you have blessings that you can draw upon at any time. It is a pleasure and an honor to co-officiate your wedding, Andrew and Rachel, together with Father Pavia. I might have taken one of his lines by asking you to sit, um, so I apologize. Uh, Nothing to apologize for, dear Rabbi. In a world often torn by divisiveness, it's wonderful to remember what unites us, love. And so a beautiful bride and a wonderful, fortunate groom, I begin with the nuptial blessing. O oh God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning, is endowed with one blessing, not fortified by sin or washed away by the flood. Now with favor look upon these your servants, Andrew and Rachel, joined soon in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Sound, send down upon them the grace and pour your love into your, their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Rachel. May her husband entrust his heart to her. Shalom and peace. As you'll soon drink from this one cup, this uh, cup of two cups intermingled into one, May you share all things throughout your lives in joy and pleasure. Baruch atadonai eloheinu melech olam bore priyagofen May the congregation say Amen We need a little more than that. Amen Baruch atadonai eloheinu melech olam Asher kirishan v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al harayot 
Vi har salanu et arusi arusot. Vi till lanu et nisuyot lanu ayidei chupa vikidushin. Baruch atadunai. Mikadesh am Yisrael. Ayidei chupa vikidushin. It's such a momentous occasion that they sent the boats and the planes all at the same time. <laughs> Everybody wants to be here. L'chaim, <laughs> l'chaim. A sacred reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. A reading of St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. And now for the consent and the vows. <clears throat> Andrew and Rachel, you have come together with all of us here, your family and friends who love you so that you may give your consent publicly. <clears throat> Have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yes. yes. Are you prepared to love and honor each other as long as you both shall live? Yes. yes. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law? Yes. Therefore, since it is your consent, you have joined your hands. Andrew, look at your beautiful bride. <laughs> I, Andrew, take you, Rachel. I, Andrew, take you, Rachel. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. Honor you. Honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Rachel, I Rachel, take you, Andrew. I, Rachel, take you, Andrew. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life.
You have declared your consent before God in this community. What the Lord has united, let no man put asunder. Those are very formal vows and traditional and beautiful. We also like to kind of show the love story of our couple here. And uh, so Father, Father Pavia and I will share that story as it was uh, related to us. Um, in, Rachel case, in Rachel's case, it will be, um, we'll share it in part because it's a very long story. And uh, <laughs> so I've um, taken the liberty to uh, zero in on uh, a certain aspect. As we started dating, I noticed that Andrew was very kind and thoughtful and a good listener. I was always surprised at his thoughtful questions to my stories and how he seemed genuinely interested in what I did. Most importantly, he was very calm and never pushy. He always let me take things at my own pace and never seemed upset. Even when he tried to hold my hand the first time, he immediately asked, is this okay? As we continued to date, I remember that moment when I realized this was something different. We were out to dinner for the first time to meet my friends. He was so worried about what to wear and he was so polite and sweet. He really tried to engage with my friends and I could tell he wanted to make a good impression. I felt so good and proud that we were together and felt a warm glowing knowing that it meant so much to him and to connect with my friends and family. I spent a long time imagining and dreaming about who I might spend my life with. What I find fascinating, most fascinating, is that Andrew is really nothing like what I imagined <laughs> because he's better. He is the person I needed who I never knew I needed. He makes me feel safe and calm, better able to adventure out and try new things. Like, for example, I never would have tried sushi before Andrew. He is that stabilizing, bracing presence that reassures me that someone always is on my side and cares about me. Even when I pretend to have a brave face, that I could do it alone. No, no, he, he is there to reassure me. He is the sounding board to tell me what I already know. He is sensitive and kind, reminding me regularly what it means to be truly loved. When I am sad or anxious, he is the one person who can reassure me that things are fine. He shows me when to be quiet and, uh, and uh, when I want to be really loud. I am a terrible uh, decision maker when it comes to my own decisions, I, of course, uh, Andrew being the exception. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he has uh, helped me to be more confident. I worry less about making the wrong decision because I know that I have a partner who will help me and support me. Andrew never misses an opportunity to tell me I am beautiful or special or smart. And even though I don't really need him to do that, it still feels good. <laughs> he, was, uh, he has helped me in a huge work transition and he helped me buy my first new car. And uh, he helps me become a better person every day. I know that Andrew is the one for me, not just because I love him, but, be, but because he is the person I want to make proud every day, and I promise to try my best to achieve that goal. <laughs> Andrew's love story. A Yonkers boy, a Long Island girl. This is the story of a New York romance that never happened in New York but rather in the distant land of Connecticut. The boy didn't save her from a burning building. They weren't set up by friends. They met through the mysterious world of online dating. Through the chance they took, however, their lives would both change forever. 
The first date was in a small Italian restaurant in Orange, Connecticut. The boy quickly realized that this was not an ordinary girl he had dated or met before. They had an excellent date and were and where they both learned about each other and connected through their New York roots and family. He was hoping that she would agree to a second date. She agreed, and it was only a matter of time before things kicked off. They went on numerous dates, restaurants, walks, on beaches, before one day the girl called the boy Novio, Spanish for boyfriend. Did I pronounce that right? Okay. They grew in getting to know each other and eventually fell in love. They have been through so many adventures since when they began dating. She is kind, gentle, sweet, smart, and about a million other positive adjectives that cannot fit on this paper. The boy truly does feel like the luckiest boy and is looking forward to the future with this amazing girl. Woo! The rings. By this ring, by this ring, you are consecrated to me. You are consecrated to me as my wife. As my wife, in accordance, in accordance with the laws, with the laws of Moses, of Moses, and the people of Israel, and the people of Israel. I am to my beloved. I am to my beloved. And my beloved is to me. And my beloved is to me. Thank בשבי בשבת בשישה עשר יום לחודש סיוון שנת חמשת אלפים ושבע מאות ושבעים ושבע למניין כאן במנרו קנדיקט באמריקה הצפונית בנוכחות משפחות וחברים. On the seventh day of the week, the sixth day of the month of Sivan in the year 5777, corresponding to the tenth day of June in the year 2017 here in Monroe, Connecticut, United States of America, in the presence of family and friends, the beloveds, Andrew Joseph Gandia, son of Joseph and Anna Maria Gandia, and Rachel Susan Bayarski, daughter of Gary, Stephen, and Marjorie Sue Bayarski, entered into the covenant of marriage. As we embark on life's journey, we promise to love, cherish, encourage, and inspire one another. Our hearts fuse together creating a unique bond with friendship and compassion at its core. Through this union, we vow to value and support each other, always striving to show sensitivity to each other's needs. We shall nurture one another emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, embracing our respective qualities, strengths, and heritages. May we continue to grow together, maintaining the courage and determination to pursue our desired paths. We promise to celebrate life's joys with grace and overcome life's adversities with tenacity. May we maintain the intimacy that fosters trust, honesty, and communication. As life partners, we shall strive to build a home emanating love, peace, charity, and tolerance. Through each other's eyes, we see the world anew. May we be better together. 
all of this is valid and binding. It's a wonderful affirmation that last night when I put the homily after knowing you for a while together, much of the same words and themes are in it. So it's a wonderful affirmation for me that I did not go against uh, the Lord and tried to live by his spirit. There is a translation of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We know the one. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to gather, a time to sow. Right after it, verse 11, these words. God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And what I believe this is saying to all of us human beings, but especially to you today, Rachel and Andrew, every detail is not ours to know except one, to love one another. It is a wonderful mystery you have both chosen to adventure together. And as the individuals unique and wonderful you are, remember, as someone once explained to me, Life is not a problem to be solved, but a mystery to be explored. Andrew, the name of the apostle Andrew, in his story, when asked why he was following the Lord, he said, I want to see where you live. And the Lord replied, come and see. This morning, with all your family and friends to help you, Andrew and Rachel, you begin a marvelous journey daily, every day, of faith, of hope, and of love, making the decision to create a new home together, inviting the Lord God to dwell with you as you seek the Eternal One's protection and blessings. And like your parents and friends who have been with you, may you both be blessings for others as you live, love, cry, laugh, and love again. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it just takes the right word, and you don't need many words, to say something that could laugh, last a lifetime. And so here's my homily. It's old, and it's good. The word for man is ish. And it's spelled uh, for the Hebrew, uh, those that know Hebrew, Aleph, Yud, Shin. And the word for Isha, it means woman, is spelled Aleph, Shin, He. So they have all the same letters, the two letters of the Aleph and the Shin. But where they differ is that the Zachor, the male, has the Yud. And the Nakeva, the female, has the He. So when we put those letters together, it spells Yah, and that means God. So there's a saying that the Spirit of God resides in the Ish, between the Ish and the Isha. That it is a special kind of spiritual law when you bring the Ish and the Isha together, not only in a physical sense, you know, that you can be partners in the creation of life itself, but uh, in your own uh, experience and your own connection with divinity, with the highest uh, wisdom, it is uh, something that uh, is magical. And so, Yah, like hallelujah, praise be God. Now, I'm only going to give you one uh, warning because that's all it takes. If you take the Ish and the Isha and remove from them, Yah, you're left with fire, Ish, Ish. Because that's the way you spell fire, Aleph, Shin. And so you are dealing with a powerful spiritual chemistry set. And so you must always 
keep Yah between you. It's very simple, straightforward. We all know what that means, to keep Yah between you, and then you shall always be blessed. Both of our traditions, the Jewish and the Catholic traditions, they come from Israel, the, ho the Holy Land. Um, Jesus was a, a Jewish man. We know this. And together, you know, it says that the Torah will go out from Zion. And Maimonides in the 12th century said that it took the Christians, took the Catholic, uh, and, and Islam, to take that message of Torah and bring it from Zion to the nations of the world. That's what Maimonides said. He's our greatest philosopher. Who am I to argue? <laughs> and uh, so we are both looking in the same direction to the Holy Land. And uh, so this blessing is the threefold blessing. Words that Jesus knew that he spoke. Uh, so, Father Pavia said it before, you know, sometimes there's so many forces in the world that, that pull things apart. And as clergy, you know, we are here to bring the message of bringing things together. And that's what the, the power and meaning of faith is. And there's more than one way to get to that mountaintop because you both got to the summit on different paths. And you're there, and we are here. The threefold blessing from the high priests of ancient Israel. to you. kindness and grant you peace. Let us say Amen. Amen. All right. There's one more thing we got to do here before we move on to the uh, celebratory part of this lovely and auspicious occasion. That is um, the curious tradition of breaking a glass. It seems so counterintuitive. Why break a glass? But well, there's many ways to explain it, just as the glass is broken. Uh, your old lives are broken, and you can never put them back together again because now you've got something even bigger and better. Also, we always remember in the highest moments of our joy where we are rooted in the Holy Land and our holy traditions, whether it be Catholicism, whether it be Judaism. That's where our sacred stuff is. Let's remember that here at this moment, which is very uh, important to us personally, let us remember the community as well. And uh, probably my favorite reason, um, certainly Rachel's uh, favorite reason, 
is the modern reason and that this may be the last time that Andrew gets to put his foot down. <laughs> so after um, he does that, we'll say Mazel Tov. And uh, Father Pavi and I, uh, once again, it is uh, an honor and a pleasure to co-officiate uh, for you, Andrew, and for you, Rachel, yes. in the presence of uh, God, Yah, hallelujah, and in the presence of all of your families and um, friends, and thank you, and let us all be blessed. So. Muscle time! Yeah.